We are just one day away from the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl, the number 19 Oregon State Beavers facing off against your number 16 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Friday, December 29th, it's a game that will kick off 2 p.m. Eastern time, 12 p.m. local time. That's El Paso, Texas. Again, Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. You can find the game on CBS. If you have cut the cord, you can watch the game on Paramount+. Plus. Um, and which is actually how I will be watching the game. So we're going to dive into the three keys uh, with our resident football expert, Tim Hyde, and he'll give his score predictions to the game. Of course, folks, hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our channel if you are new here. Go to blueandgold.com for much more preview content of this matchup, and make sure right after the game you come to the Blue and Gold YouTube channel as Tim and myself will be live to break it all down. So let's just dive into the three keys, my friend. Number one is, look, Tim, this is the Sun Bowl. It, the importance of this game is not great, but it does really kind of give a good indicator of what Notre Dame has on its roster for next year. Could we see the 2024 starting offensive line for the Irish in this game? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, that's a biggie, is obviously you're losing two NFL offensive tackles. And Joel Alt and Blake Fisher. Joel Alt, obviously, a you know, unanimous All American, one of the best offensive tackles ever to play at the University of Notre Dame. So, just an iconic left tackle for Notre Dame since he got inserted against the Cincinnati game and Mike Denbrock in 2021. So, um, now you got Charles Jagasaw, who's a five star, one of the top offensive linemen, got himself ready, and then it just came on board, blew up in practices the last part of the season wins a left tackle job for the, for this game. And then Tosh Baker, who started a handful of games in 2021 and then been sitting behind Alton Fisher, beat out Emil Wacker. And Tosh Baker, obviously another top 100 recruit who's uh, waited his turn. So if they go out and they and they have a solid Sun Bowl, obviously they head into winter conditioning, spring football as the two tackles for next season. The interior set, you got Pat Koo going to start at every game. Ashton Craig has, has come on since Zeke got knocked out against Clemson and has been outstanding. And then you got Billy Shroud, who was one of the premier offensive guards in the country, is basically he's taken over for Rocco with his injury. Rocco comes back, gives him more depth and all of his, his starts. And you're looking at a really, really good offensive line in 2024, heading into especially College Station in the A&M game. Here's something fascinating, Tim. The 2022 season, you have offensive coordinator Tommy Reese and your two quarterbacks, Tyler Buckner and Drew Pine. The 2023 season, you have offensive coordinator Jared Parker and quarterback Sam Hartman. The 2023 bowl game, offensive coordinator Gino Gadouli and quarterback Steve Angeli. And then the 2024 season, Mike Denbrock, your offensive coordinator and your quarterback is Riley Leonard. That is three seasons. <laughs> With three different offensive, well, four different offensive coordinators. If we're going to go with Gadouli for, you know, counting him for this Sun Bowl, and then uh, you can't even count the amount of quarterbacks there, Tim. So yeah, another another different offensive coordinator and quarterback combination here for the Irish. No, it's yeah, it's wild. That's why I was like, this is a uh, this is a key because you have basically you know two guys who are there for it for an interim basis. You got Mike Denbrock coming from LSU and Riley Leonard, heck of a quarterback coming in from Duke or. He's expected to be the guy next year, but who's who's at number two? If Angeli goes out and he's the Sun Bowl MVP, you're confident in him heading into the spring. Like, bam, he's been in this system for two years. He's been in this program. All those all those good things that start to add up as he becomes an upperclassman next year, his junior year. He could be trusted and counted upon to come into games if needed if Riley Leonard is injured and whatnot in the 24 season. So this is a big game from him. And it, and obviously, Gino Gadula, he was an OC a year ago, uh, you know, it's at Cincinnati. So he has all games. And the fact that he's worked with Angeli all season as the number two quarterback, he knows what he could do in this game. He knows his strength, his weaknesses, as he builds the game plan around Steve. And they've known he was going to be the quarterback, you know, ever since that Stanford game ended. And Gino Gadula uh, said in his press conference uh, yesterday at the, at the Sun Bowl, like, you know what, they've had this thing ready to roll for a couple of weeks. Before even practice started, they had the, the game plan prepped and ready, built around Steve. So um, it, it's exciting to see what these two guys does do in this game. And Gino Gudulli may just say, hey, 
Heck with it. Let's go have fun, Steve. Let's go enjoy this thing, and uh, let's go do a few things that Notre Dame fans haven't seen this year. So that's going to yeah. be an interesting thing in the Sun Bowl. Another interesting note here is that within the, just the context of this season, whether it gets to nine or ten wins, it doesn't really matter. It's not very consequential. But when you, like, look back and, and you start to stack how long Marcus Freeman's been here, like, the amount of 10 win seasons he has, that's going to be a metric. That's something we look at with Brian Kelly, you know, post the 2016 rebuild, all these 10 win seasons he kept stacking. I, I, I think that when you kind of look big picture at Freeman's early tenure, you do every win matters, especially when you get up to double digits. You, you don't want to go into year three without having a double digit season under your belt, Tim. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, getting that 10th win. You know, it doesn't take away from the three losses. We know that. We fully understand that. But it is a it is a, a milestone. It is something to hit early in his coaching uh, tenure. And you know, we talk about Marcus Freeman so much. We 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 always almost sometimes got to take a step back and realize it's only his second season ever of being a head football coach. So this is still something new. He's still learning all these things. But to say, boom, I got ten wins. We got the double digits in year two with you know the season they had, the ranked teams they had, the road trips they had, another transfer quarterback, the wide receiver issues, the injuries and things of that nature. But they had an elite offensive tackle, an elite running back, one of the premier defenses in the country, a lot of really good building things moving forward. And then the 10th win, what this 10th win means is a little stat that I went back and dug up uh, looking at Notre Dame. Back-to-back bowl wins against ranked teams, which, you know, we always talk about the bowl win, but it's back-to-back ranked wins. South Carolina, Oregon State. The last time Notre Dame, this is fascinating, the last time Notre Dame has won back-to-back bowl games over ranked opponents, 1991-92-93, when they upset Florida in the Sugar Bowl and back-to-back Cotton Bowl wins over uh, A&M. The end the 92 93 seasons. Mike, that's a long time ago. Yeah. That's called Lou Holtz. So there's been many coaches since then that have never done it. And I found that interesting. What this 10th win means is a full win over a ranked opponent. And I just, I, I think that is very important for Marcus Freeman, this program, recruiting, moving into that uh, year three. In terms of Oregon State, folks, your guess is as good as ours. I mean, it's even if Oregon State had its full roster of everyone you saw during the season, it would be tough for us to kind of, you know, we're, we're the Notre Dame guys. We don't you know, do a ton of scouting with the other opponents. I know Tim probably will. Um, you know, I know he's going to you know, watch Texas A&M all the time, but um, they're, they had a revolving door of players transferring out and, and entering the, and, and all that stuff, but it's a team – that went eight and four. They have lost their last two games against a couple powerhouse programs in Oregon and Washington. They also lost uh, against uh, Arizona earlier in the year on the road by three points. Had a good win over Utah at home, and uh, in in September they lost to Washington State. So it, it is a good Oregon State team, but they're down to their third string quarterback and Ben Branson, who has some experience from playing last year, and I think he's only played one game this year, but. They're also out there, you know, their top running back in the game. So, like, Notre Dame doesn't look anything like they did during the season. Neither will Oregon State. So, uh, that's the fun that Tim Hyde has to do is predict this game. Best of luck to you, my friend. We will look at the odd shark here. Um, Notre Dame predicted to win 41-32. to 32. Interesting, this spread, Tim, opened up at 10.5. Um, right really when the uh, the game was announced, moved up to 12 points in favor of Notre Dame, and then it just dropped, drop, 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 drop. As we record this video on Wednesday night, Notre Dame's a six-and-a-half point favorite against Oregon State. The uh, over-under has dropped from 46-and-a-half that it opened at down to 41. Again, interesting stuff. So uh, Odd Shark has Notre Dame winning 41-32. to 32 in a high, high scoring contest. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, I was listening to a national college football podcast and they were talking about how Vegas is getting hit hard with their uh, predictions. Because how do you predict these, you know, these lower tier bowl games, which is basically what the Sun Bowl is, let's be honest. And um, (laughs) there's so many opt-outs. 
I mean, how the heck? We were just talking earlier about what the the is it the Orange Bowl or the yeah the Georgia Florida State game. Forty players opting out. How do you know? How do you do a point spread for some of these? So, what I did, Mike, is I just did what Tim Hyde does sometimes. You look at numbers, you chop them in half. And DJ DJU for Oregon State, Sam Hartman were the two of the premier quarterback transfers. They their numbers were pretty much equal all year. They're not playing in this game. Bunch of opt outs some really good defensive guys at Oregon State. Notre Dame's got a lot of new guys on offense. So if you take the if you take their averages, you cut them in half. I come to 20 to 16, but I'm gonna give Notre Dame a bonus three points for Mike Singer and Steve Angeli. I have no idea. I hope this is a blowout. I hope my prediction is wrong, but I'll go 23 to 16. Let's get the heck out of here and let's get that 10th win for uh, Notre Dame and Marcus Freeman. All right, there you go, folks. Hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our channel for more content. And please do plan on joining us live on our YouTube channel after the game as Tim and I break it all down. Appreciate you all. And as always, we will catch you next time.